coming to our present set of circumstances and indeed our nation's situation, I am sad to report that currently we have a one-man commando in State House. A one-man commando who is basically interested in micromanaging everything and everybody for his benefit to his fancies and whims. Most of you have been calling me and asking how do you rate the UPND government in the last 18, 20 months they've been in government on a scale of 1 to 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'll give them 2 in terms of leadership, in terms of economic direction, in terms of moral fiber. The president of this country suffers from inertia and tolerance to lies. From the time that he was in the opposition, this president, my good friend, Aga in the HLM, has been lying to this country and to the citizens and those lies are now coming back to haunt him. It is different when you are trying to get into office and you're trying to win the hearts of your citizens. And when you compare that to when you're in office. But the killer punch politically has always been that you must have a plan. You must have a vision. A leader who suffers from the lack of vision cannot take his nation anywhere. Now you're all here, and if you are investigative journalists, this is the one million dollar question you must put across to any leader in the UPND, starting from the president. And the question is this, what is the manifesto, the economic manifesto of the UPND as you sit here? you as journalists. Ask them that. What is the economic direction that we are taking as a nation? Ask them that. I say my good friend suffers from inertia and tolerance to lies because you can categorize the lies that he has told since he was in opposition to date. I don't want to go through that because you've got those lies on your social media pages, they are there. But some of the things I want to point out are very simple but straightforward. And we shouldn't be forgetting so quickly as Zambians. When you're building a team around you as a president, you must make sure that the people that are around you do not tell you lies and are qualified to be there. I am talking about the economic advisor of the president. Do we know a gentleman called Jito Kayumi? This is the gentleman who lied in his CV to get a job. Maybe you've forgotten that. You need reminder. He told the nation in the CV that he had sat on the board for our central bank, Bank of Zambia. This was proved to be a lie. And Bank of Zambia said they've never had this gentleman sitting on their board. But using that CV, he got a job. Did the president of this country discipline or fire Jito Kanuma? No, he's still there. And this is the man who's supposed to be running your economies. Further, when you falsify documents, it's a criminal offense. Have you seen Jito arrested? No. Then there was the Levi Ngoma Akafumba recording, which you all listened to. Something about a political party 
at the Ministry of Home Affairs being registered or not registered. Maybe you've forgotten. When you're looking at the behavior of a government, you look from the head. <coughs> what does this head tolerate? This head tolerates lies. The poor performance and lack of communication between you, the media houses, and the Ministry of Media and Information, as it's called. How many policies have you been given by this government to give you direction so that you can inform the nation about what's going on in the country? Now, I see a lot of pretty young girls here journalists who've powdered themselves, but not as much as someone powders themselves running the Ministry of Information. What do you get from there, apart from powder? You have to be questioning some of these appointments, because this is how we run a nation, for example. When the president was in opposition. He made it seem like he had a good team around him. It took my good friend four to five months to announce his cabinet. Four to five months. Is this a president who was ready for leadership? You as journalists must be keeping a tab so that you follow him. The first minister he appointed was the Minister of Finance, Mr. Msokotan, Honorable Msokotan. After that, there was silence. And you, the media people, were being invited to State House in drips and drabs to go and hear about who's appointed and who's not appointed. There was social media running about who's going to be in the cabinet and who's not going to be in the cabinet. Some of you even thought I was going to be there. I didn't want a job with UPND. I simply went to help them win an election. This poor performance and lack of communication between you, the journalists, the press, and the Zambian people, because you're the eyes through which the people of Zambia see government, this poor performance has led to a lack of communication between government and the people of Zambia. We move to the drug shortage. There's been a persistent drug shortage, medicine shortage, in our hospitals, in our clinics, since the UPND came into power. You, as journalists, are witnesses to this. Some of you have gotten sick. Your relatives have gotten sick. You've gone to hospitals and there's no medicine. What is NEMA doing? How is NEMA functioning? Have you investigated that? Or your kind of reporting journalists is just to get information from the minister? How many of you have been knocking on my sister's office at the Ministry of I mean, health, Honorable Silvia Masil, to ask, you will agree that the doctors themselves, with a group of parliamentarians, undertook a study and they agreed that there was a shortage of medicine in the country. They presented this by a bipartisan parliamentary committee to parliament that there are shortages of drugs in this country. There was a report. The Secretary General of the Doctors' Medical Association was on TV, I think on one of your TV stations, suggesting very strongly that we should declare the shortage of drugs a very serious emergency. What has happened to that problem? Has that problem been solved? The answer is no. But you, as journalists, you make these stories die, and the people begin to think this is normal. I think I am here to ask you 
in my media friends to help the Zambian people that we must begin to change and shift the paradigm. You are part of the problem. You're not informing this country and you're not making the powerful accountable to the people who put them in office. This drug shortage is still there. There's an MP for Lukulu, a Dr. Kadila, Kalali, I may not pronounce his name properly. He's a UPND man. Go and ask him, what happened to this report? The Secretary General for the Medical Doctors Association is there. Go and ask him, what happened to this report? Ask Conor Bomasele, what has happened to the drugs? Is there an improvement? Are people not still being given prescriptions when they go to hospitals as we speak today? Is this good governance? Is this the way we're going to run our country? There came the issue of the auditing of the Minister of Defense by friends to the President. The Grand Fountain. Not the Auditor General, Grand Fountain, a private firm, went to audit Minister of Defense. Has any one of you, as reporters, bothered to find out what that report says? about the Minister of Defense. What is in that report? What did they find out? How far has that report gone? Why was it necessary to hire a private auditing firm to audit the Ministry of Defense? We must not gloss over issues as Zambians. Sometimes we tend to rush and live in the fray of what is happening now, and we begin to forget what happened yesterday. In politics, that is how you bury problems over other problems, and then you begin to say, but what happened to that? And then you can't remember, because somewhere along the line, this government wants you to live in the fast lane, but you as journalists must always be two steps behind, not be three steps ahead, two steps behind. You must be asking, but you said this yesterday, what has happened to it? You promised us this, what has happened to this? So why was it necessary to have Grant Thornton audit the Minister of Defense? Has any one of you bothered to find out why? Where is that report? The President does not trust government civil servants. He does not trust the crop of civil servants that he found in government especially those at director, peers, and other higher levels. You've seen the recent sacking of the Auditor General. He may have his own problems, but he's been fired. At the Ministry of Finance, there was a cleaner. You go and ask at the police service, how many senior police officers have been retired, dismissed, or terminated? Go and ask at the various ministries, at director level, how many people have been sent on forced leave, some of them not fired. They go and park their cars, park their cars in the car parks. They read newspapers. But their offices have been taken over by other people. This is a government that promised you that they were going to make sure that there's accountability. You're paying two people for the same job. One substantive officer reading a newspaper, another guy who's been brought as acting. And it's happening almost everywhere. Even in your media houses, those that are controlled by government, there's been a clean out. When you begin to mistrust your civil servant, as a president, as a government, what you're doing is you're wiping away the institutional memories of the civil service. And that is going to kill the civil service. The president recently was on one of your media saying, we are having a few problems with some civil servants. 
You cannot have problems with civil servants when you haven't given them policy direction. The problem is you, Mr. President. You don't have direction. Your leadership lacks direction. So what are people going to be following? You want people to follow you, to do what you want them to do, but you haven't given direction. Civil servants work on manifestos for a political party. Civil servants obey the party of the day. Now, if you haven't given them direction, you can't say you're having problems. The problem is you. The UPND is a problem. It has no direction. And you, the press, must take them to task. I've seen you attending pressers at State House. And some of your questions, frankly, I don't know where you get them from. Because they are more burning issues. You ask the most irrelevant questions. I'm not condemning you, my media friends, but I'm trying to communicate to the nation. We have you as journalists. We have you as our eyes to the nation. It is your job to hold any government accountable. Ask the right questions, tough questions. If not, follow them up through investigative journalism. Find time. That is how some of you win awards. Because you know what to do, you know where to search. But we're not seeing that. Whatever happened to that crop of reporters who were at the post, who could dig and dig deeper, and throw the mud at government and say, we know you're doing this. Have you lost your knack as journalists? You just want to report what a minister said, what a president said? The Zambian people deserve better from you guys. The president has this tendency of micromanaging his government because in his head, he's still an auditor. He believes that no one can function without his signature. Ministers have not been given the free reign in their ministries. Go and ask the ministers. They are failing to speak. They are failing to come up with policies. They are failing to advise the government, to advise their P1. Each minister must come up with his own policy direction. This is what I want so that the nation improves. Have you ever heard any minister in the UPND issue a policy direction other than the president, Haga Indechina? And you're sitting. Have you ever heard any minister come and tell you this is what the government wants to do? The way this government is running, we are heading for disaster. And if you, the journalists, don't call them out for what they are doing, or lack thereof, this nation will not get the correct information to come and make the correct decision come 2026. And then you'll be saying, no, but what happened here? What happened is you're not informing your citizen. You should be informing them. So this attitude that I am the partner in an audit firm, I should sign off everything before it leaves my desk, is the mentality our president has taken into State House. He has to see everything that each minister is doing. It doesn't work like that. Government does not function like that. The reason we have government is to ensure that each minister runs his ministry with his <coughs> peers and directors to the best of his ability. I don't want to say what happens in cabinet. But rumors are that somewhere along the line, uh, they are lectures. People are lectured to and told what to do. Now, if you don't come up with the policy yourself as a minister, as a PS, as a director, but you're being lectured to, that's why things are failing. Because you didn't think it through. It didn't come from your mind. It came from someone else. When you initiate something, you're likely to have thought through it, the corners, and you know this is what I want to do. But when it is imposed on you, nothing moves. Today, unfortunately, this has even permeated right down to cabinet. Cabinet office 
is not giving technical direction to the leaders. Government is not the UPND. Government is not PF. Government is not MMD. Government is the civil service run by cabinet office. There are rules and regulations at cabinet office. And whenever a party comes into power, it is the duty of the civil servant to go and tell that government, these are the rules under which government operates. What policies do you have so that we can fit these two and work within your manifesto or your policies? That is not happening. So what we're seeing today is that cabinet office has been reduced to the role of simply being protocol officers at state house. They are not educating the politicians. Politicians don't go and tell civil servants what to do. No. They say, this is our policy. How does government policy, how does government regulations fit into this? Because tomorrow, this UPND government will leave. The civil servants will remain. The regulations of government will be the same. The only thing that changes is the policy direction coming from a political party. And that's what the UPND has failed to give, <clears throat> excuse me, the civil servants. That's why these complaints are coming against the civil servants. The civil servants are not failing. The UPND government is failing to give policy direction for the civil servants to marry their regulations with the policy of the day. And that's the problem. But you, again, my dear friends, as journalists, are not questioning these things. I want us to have an exchange today so that you understand that you have a duty as a press to push the government so that you understand exactly what the policy is on health, on agriculture, on defense, on foreign affairs, on every other ministry. You must know so that you communicate to the Zambians. Let's talk of agriculture which is a burning issue right now. When the president appointed Minister Mutolo <clears throat> as the Minister of Agriculture, some of us were happy because this is a guy who has run FRA, he's got some agricultural background, and we understand he's got a brain between his ears. He's going to come up with policies, he's going to come up with some indication of how to get us moving as a nation. What do we see? What do we see? We see this minister go on the floor of parliament, start telling the nation, we're going to be exporting minimum, we'll be exporting maize, and you won't stop us, and we will not stop. You heard it. What has happened now with that policy? Because you didn't calculate how much maize you had in stocks, in your silos. You didn't know whether or not some of that maize had gone bad. You didn't know whether the population in Zambia had grown. And you didn't know whether market forces would be the same. Now you have a problem. We have gone back 30, 40 years into the Kaunda era, where wives, young girls, young men are now leaving their homes at 05 in the morning to go and queue up. For minimum, because of a policy by a stubborn, arrogant government. And you, my dear friends, you're watching. Don't let your jobs as journalists be taken over by social media. Social media will only give you a direction. What's happening in Kasumpe is this. What's happening in Chingola is this. In Chirirabumbu, it is this. In Mufulira, it is this. What is happening in Livingston, in Indola, it is this. But it is your job to move. Go on the ground, I'm sorry, and go and ensure that you get the facts. And then you go back to government and say, but your policy was, isn't this the cause of this? Because if you let government run, the way it is running today, you, my dear friends, would have failed in your duties. Don't blame the citizens when they begin to throw stones at the millers 
as it was happening in Chingona. Don't blame those youths when they get riotous, because they're hungry. This is the same president in opposition who was saying a hungry man is an angry man. I agree with you. So when people begin to react because they're angry, don't blame them. So how many of you have gone back to Ruben Mutolo, honor, and asked him the very pertinent questions about this policy? Now we have the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Defense, Minister of Agriculture dropping in and issuing such instruments. I was reading a circular from the Minister of Finance. I don't even know what such instrument number that is, but finance has issued such instruments to protect minimum. In a government, in a country where we are not a socialist mm -hmm. country, this is not a commandist economy. We have a mixed economy here. Basically, we are capitalists, if you ask me. The policies we have today, since the MMD, we refused a commandist economy. So how come we are now going to start rationing who buys what? Talk to your relatives. You go to shops today, there's a poster at the door. You can only buy one bag of minimum. What if I've got a funeral? What if I'm going for campaigns? What if I've got more children to feed? Ngan are you pimpered? And my family is big. I buy a bag of minimum. You dip my hand in ink. Welcome to voting early. But we are watching this, and you, as journalists, are not asking the right questions. You're not holding this government accountable. Let's not gloss over important matters, because tomorrow we are the same people who will be crying to say, when did this happen? It's simmering underneath here, and something may go wrong tomorrow, depending on how you, the media, handle this information. There is inconsistency at the Ministry of Agriculture. We all know what happened to FISIP. When this government came into power, we all know what happened to the FISIP program. There was a rush. No, 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 let them form cooperatives. No, no, let them do that. Our women, our youths ran to Pakra to go and form cooperatives. They obeyed. No, CDF is also going to help you with cooperatives. They run to make these cooperatives. No, the agriculture sector will be taken up very importantly because, hey, I am also a farmer, the president told us. The women and the youth responded. The cooperatives have been formed. What has happened to this fiscal policy? Brother? Where is the money? Have you asked those questions, my dear friends? Have you been to the Ministry of Agriculture to ask these questions? There is also the policy on maize exports. Have you asked the pertinent questions? How many bags of maize have been exported? To which countries and why? What's the value to this nation? How much foreign exchange have we earned by the exportation of maize? Do we have those answers? This is your job. Today, we are asking the same question on Mirimir. How many bags of Mirimir have been exported? To which countries? Why? How much foreign exchange has come into this country? Why was that policy important at the time it was taken? Why did this government decide to export maize and Mirimir outside this country? And for what benefit to this country? Foreign exchange, how much has come in? Do we know those answers? No, we don't. Why? You're not holding this government accountable. It is your duty, members of the press, to hold the powerful accountable. Further, we had this so-called democratic conference which was held here 
I'm not blaming you, uh, members of the press, and I know, for instance, that um, ZNBC, being the national broadcaster, has a policy that they must support the government of the day. So you tried in your own way to publicize this democrat democratic uh, conference at Mungoshi Conference Center. But here's a question. We were given that this conference was going to bring in so many people. We were also told that this conference was going to have a lot of money coming to the country. It was also going to help in tourism. This conference was supposed to put Zambia on the map. I ask again, have you, as journalists, gone to government and asked the president how much money we got, we made out of this democratic conference that we held in? What were the benefits that accrued to this country? What did we see at this conference? What did we hear, apart from our own president talking? and some Minister of Education or something from the United States. Who else of importance came here? How many presidents from the African continent came to this democratic conference? I was on a show somewhere. Is it hot? And one of you was saying, no, but they attended by virtue. Really? Have you ever heard of Mr. Cooper? You can leave a jacket and someone will be thinking you're attending a conference. Is he there? Members of the press, I am trying to poke your brains so that you begin to understand that you have a job to do. And you and us as politicians must be partners in the development of this country. This democratic conference that we had was necessary, we were told. It was important, we were told. It was carefully planned, we were told. It was coming on the backhand of our president having been invited to the United States with 49 other heads of states in Africa. Truth be told, what did we get as a nation? Have you asked the Minister of Finance how much money has come into our nation as a result of that conference? Or we've just glossed over it. We've taken the pictures, photo ops, and it's done. That democratic conference had people from the United States trying to tell us about how democracy works in America and how good being a Democrat is, we heard and we listened to the speeches. We're grateful. But some of us are students of history, and we know that America is a racist state. Whether you like it or not, that's what it is. That's who they are. America was founded on the labor of slaves who toiled the plantations for 244 years as slaves. Civil rights are just being introduced today. But even now, that country is still divided on racial lines. That's the country you want to run to, to teach you about democracy. That's the country you want to align yourself to. The United States this year, some of you may not know, has had 147 mass shootings since January. And we are just in April. 147 mass shootings. Do you see them changing the gun laws in America? They're not changing. A week ago, or is it a few days ago, two local legislators in the state of Tennessee were expelled. Black legislators, young men, 26, 27 years old, for protesting on the floor of parliament that they wanted gun laws changed because there were shootings in Louisiana. What are we doing? We want to copy that? 
These are the same people who are coming with the undercurrent of gay rights in this country. And you say that's a model of democracy? I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I will not subscribe to that. Go back to what I told you at the beginning. What is a nation? What is a nation? We must be agreed on a set of values, ideals, morals that we must live by as a nation. Don't import. If the United States is going to impose democracy on Zambia based on the fact that gay rights must be imposed in Zambia, on behalf of Zambia must prosper, read my lips, it will not happen. We as a political party will fight that tooth and nail. And if their aid is going to be tied to that, let them take their aid. We are not interested. Look at that society critically before you import some of their values here. We know that CDC from America supports the health sector, and we're grateful. But look at their area of support. They mainly support the supply of condoms. They support drugs for HIV and other related diseases. They'll give government a bit of money here and there and support systems. But why is CDC today trying to be running parallel structures against WHO? Have you asked yourselves that? Why is CDC today trying to take over the role of WHO, the World Health Organization, to which we are all accredited? They pulled out their support from the WHO and they gave it to CDC and they said we'll be supporting African states bilaterally not through WHO have you asked the questions why? this issue of trying to follow America for the sake of following America to me smells of state capture I don't know what our president signed up to before he became president of this country but you as journalists must ask the right questions. Hold the powerful accountable. Ask why he's the president of this country so bent on having America as a friend of Zambia. When our biggest creditor is China. Why are we not talking to the Chinese? Who we owe money. Colossal sums of money which Chinese have always been our developmental partners. Why? I wanted to bring these issues to the fore and then make this announcement. You as members of the press owe a duty to this country and that duty is servant leadership which is the hallmark of Zambia must prosper. We want to ensure that as we prepare to take over government, you will be partners in the development of this country, but hold us accountable. I am going to say this, it might sound rude, but you, my dear friends, the journalists of this country, are operating at 50%. You are just reporting what you're told. You're not asking the right questions. I hope this engagement, and as we begin to learn much more about the world and the geopolitics that we're in today, will open certain areas for you to begin to investigate for you to begin to ask the right questions. Today, I was supposed to be attending the last AGM in Livingston. I am not there. Because I know that the president is attending the AGM and there will be another talk show. I deliberately stayed away. I am not ready to be lectured to. 
and be told about democracy and good governance when I know there is no good governance in my country. I'll speak off the cuff. I want to talk to our taxi drivers, our minibus drivers, our bus drivers and the people operating from the streets. We know that caderism has not ended. We know that some of your vehicles are being smashed. We know that you are being forced to pay UPND cadres every day at these bus stops. So when they say that caderism has ended, it hasn't. Isn't that part of good governance? Why is that not being investigated by you people? Quietly go and talk to the mean bus drivers. Ask them. But to you, the mean bus drivers, the taxi drivers, and the bus drivers all together, just know that we are your friends. We have received all your reports and we are concerned. But we shall take care of you when the time comes. Not to issue an But here's an olive branch from Zambia must prosper. Be our friends. We know what you can do on the ground and how you can campaign. Start campaigning now. It is very clear this government is headed for failure. And therefore, let us start making those alliances and friendships. Lastly, to my fellow opposition leaders, I am saying this to you through this presser. Let us open dialogue and begin to look at the poor Zambians. Let's not put our egos before the nation. Patriotism must always be there and it must come first. We need this nation turning back and moving on course. I didn't want to go into too much detail about the scandals that are going on, but I think I've jostled your minds to direct you to go and say, what about this to those people who are currently in power today? So that they are able to answer and speak to the Zambian people not just to go and have a presser. And some of you failed to ask the Vice President of America when she was here the right questions. I expected you to be bold enough to ask the right questions. I didn't hear that. You, the journalists, must be the friends of those poor Zambians out there, not friends of the politicians of the day. Politicians come and go. Remember that. Politicians come and go. And UPND will be going soon. So don't get too cozy with them. Get cozy with the Zambian people. I thank you. <laughs>